Hey guys, Chris here, the RC Geek. Welcome back. This week, we're looking at the new E-Flight 70mm EDF Viper Jet. This airplane is a great looking little jet uh, that flies just incredibly well. Also, the bind and fly version has safe select available. So if you're newer to RC and looking to jump into jets, this is a nice option to have. This airplane makes for a wonderful first jet with or without safe, quite frankly. Obviously, without safe, you want to have some proficiency on the sticks first uh, before jumping into a high-speed jet. Uh, but, you know, just keep that in mind. Now, when we talk about the Viper Jet, it is indeed a real airplane. Um, so, we are talking about a scale jet here. Uh, the full-size airplane is actually, it's a home-built airplane. So, you know, for a cool half million and, uh, you know, 3,500 plus hours assembly time, you too could have one. I kid, of course, but you know the thing is that the proportions of the real airplane are such that it just makes for a great flying model that handles much like a purpose-designed RC sport jet. So what you get is some fun aerobatic flying in a fun scale package. It's a pretty popular design in the jet community for that reason. Obviously, what's on the model is not a scale paint scheme, uh, but I gotta say, I actually like it quite a bit. You know, I'm a sucker for splinter camouflage. Anyhow, let's get into it, guys, and give you all the details on this E-Flight Viperjet. So, let's go! Now, the Viperjet comes nicely packaged and assembles extremely quickly. Uh, the kit has a very small parts count, which primarily just requires you bolt the tails on, uh, then you bolt the dorsal on, and then finish it up by installing the wing. The hardest part was routing and you know connecting all of the wires, as it takes a little time to find all of the appropriate connections. It's kind of a rat's nest in there with everything hooked up, but it certainly works. Oh, and if you have the bind and fly version, which I have here, uh, that unlabeled wire coming out of the receiver is the bind wire. It took me a few minutes to figure that out. Now thinking back, I think it was about 20 minutes worth of effort uh, getting the airplane assembled and everything hooked up. In the process of assembly, I couldn't help but add a center burner into the airplane and it looks pretty awesome in the air, I have to say. Even though I know, you know, the real airplane doesn't have an afterburner, <laughs> I just couldn't help it. I mean, it is kind of a military paint scheme after all. Now having the airplane together, it really does look nice. I do like the paint scheme quite a bit as it's kind of got that aggressor feel to it with the Russian stars and the splinter camouflage. As I said, total sucker for splinter camo, so I guess it shouldn't be any surprise that I like it. Now one thing that I noticed uh, was that the foam on this airframe is extremely smooth, which is a welcome difference to the other E-Flight airplanes I've come across. Uh, it's actually one of the smoother EPO airplanes I've had the opportunity to fly. Uh, so that was really nice to see. Of course, it only took about five minutes for that cockpit foam to swell up. You know, we are flying on a pretty hot day, so it's not that surprising. The rest of the airplane held up great though, and you know, it didn't show any signs of swelling, even on the black anti-glare portion. Oh, and one important thing to note is to choose your batteries wisely for the airplane. I had hoped to use a 6S5000 since I had a few of them, uh, but to get those to fit would have required a bit of foam removal and just made the airplane nose heavy. So I ended up picking up some 25C uh, 4000 milliamp hour packs from Roaring Top, uh, which actually worked out fantastic. Uh, the fan is only pulling about 60 amps or so, uh, so no issues with C rating and they're lightweight and fit well in the nose too. So just keep that in mind. They do recommend about a 3700 milliamp hour pack. The thing is that, you know, this is only a 70 millimeter sized airframe. So space is a lot more limited compared to, you know, larger airframes. Now setting up the airplane, this was the bind and fly version, which means it includes safe select. I do have a discussion posted on that technology and some suggestions for using it. So if you'd like to see that, you can click the icon in the upper right corner. I have a link there. The thing to keep in mind is that there are two distinct bind procedures. For me, I didn't want safe on, uh, so I simply bound the airplane normally, keeping the bind plug in place uh, the whole time. Now to bind with safe on, uh, then you start the bind procedure normally, uh, but prior to selecting bind on the transmitter, uh, you remove the bind plug from the receiver. The airplane then gives an indication of the mode it's in during initialization by cycling the surfaces either once 
for safe select off uh, or twice for safe select on. If you can get away with flying this airplane without safe, it's recommended as the airplane is high performance and agile, so you'll have a lot more fun with it. Where it may be the most helpful is in takeoff and landings to protect the airplane during you know, those most critical phases of flight, and if you get in trouble too. That said, you know the airplane lands extremely easily as it is without safe. Now, on the control surface setup, uh, you know I actually started with a downloadable file that they have on the Spectrum website uh, for this airplane, and then tweaked the settings a bit, setting up triple rates, and then I moved the flap switch around uh, to where I wanted it. I noticed that you know they have push rods all set at lower holes on the servos, uh, which works for the most part. Uh, however, there wasn't enough steering or rudder throw for me, so I moved both of those to the outermost hole on the servo arm, and then maxed out the endpoint travel and the radio. Through flying the airplane, Here's what I'm using for throws. Uh, these equate to my maximum rates, so just a heads up there. For elevator, one half inch uh, with 10% expo. For aileron, 5 16 inch both ways with 10% expo. Uh, and then for rudder, one half inch either way, and honestly I could probably use a little bit more uh, to get the knife edge a little bit better. You know, like I said, this was the max I could get without um, doing any major changes. Now for flaps, three quarter inch mid and then one and three eighths at full flaps with about a 10% down elevator mix, uh, which is only about 1 16th inch in physical elevator travel. Now the CG location recommended in the manual is 75 to 85 millimeters as measured from the wing leading edge root aft. Uh, the CG felt a little nose heavy to me here, especially in the inverted. So I actually am flying the airplane closer to 85 to 90 millimeters. Uh, I'm just CGing the airplane with my fingertips and then looking for the aircraft to be level or slightly nose down. Uh, for battery, as mentioned, I'm using a Roaring Top 25C 4000 milliamp hour pack and it's placed as far back as I can put it right up to the front of the receiver. Uh, the airplane flies great there. Now, how does this airplane fly? This Viper Jet flies absolutely fantastically and really looks good doing it. It's a very forgiving design and has a nice wide speed envelope. It does aerobatics well, including snap rolls, should you choose to do so, uh, and has good vertical and just flies like a jet should. Uh, rolls nice and axial. The inverted is easy, requiring just a slight amount of down elevator, as the airplane tracks extremely true. Knife edges require some speed and would do better with some additional rudder throw um, if you can get it. What I really love are slow speed, low passes with the flaps down over the runway. Uh, you know, the airplane is so stable and solid, it'll just hang inches over the runway for as long as you can handle. You know, I had taken the airplane out to Best in the West. For some early morning flying, I was flying the Viper Jet and came pretty darn close to scraping the flaps. Now, if you're new to jets, this is a great first start that will get you going, and even if you're not, this is a fun little airplane, you know, just to keep your skills fresh. The form factor is really nice in that you can throw the airplane in the car, and then you can just fly it in between flights of your other airplanes. It's extremely transportable in that sense, which is great. All right, so here's a short flight video of the airplane in action. Uh, you know, this is the aircraft bone stock with the 25C 4000 milliamp hour pack and the center burner installed. Flying the airplane hard, you know, I'm still getting over five minutes of flight time. If you'd like to see the full uncut video, you can see that by clicking the icon in the upper right corner. There's a link there. Check it out, guys, and then we'll wrap this up.
So there we have the E-Flight 70mm Viper Jet. You know, this is a great flying little EDF that looks good, assembles and sets up quickly, and just flies great. And if you're looking for safe select in a jet, uh, this is it. But, you know, be sure to choose your batteries wisely, though. Otherwise, you know, you'll be carving foam to get the batteries to fit. And even then, you could end up nose heavy. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you found this review helpful. You know, I have a full article on my blog, thercgeek.com, with links to everything. That also includes my Spectrum Aircraft file, too, if you'd like to download that. Uh, be sure to subscribe. And if you'd like to see some of the other reviews that we've done, uh, you can see those here. Or if you'd like to see uh, some of the scale action for my trip out to Top Gun, uh, you can see those down here. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you at the field.